brandishing your trivial little conquests under my nose in my own house. Our house? And why did you put it up for sale without consulting me? The wind. I was going to remind you, Pamela, that while I'm an ambassador, I require you to behave as an ambassador's wife. Did you come down with Hindlesham in that comic open car outside? It is. He let me drive it. I enjoyed doing so. And anyone could have seen you and told anyone who hadn't. Told anyone what? What you're pretending to believe now? First Henderson gets your blame, now am I too? You're too bloody well remember that we have to behave in public, to hell with private, in such a way that will not send shivers of delight down the grubby backs of the clean-mouthed, clean-living, dirty-minded taxpayers who are lusting to chop us down when we show the first sign of the common humanity that they're too narrow-minded, jealous, or incapable of enjoying for themselves except by proxy through their Sunday newspapers. That is why my report has to be ready by the morning. Since I don't officially know where Caswell is, and since the report would be valuable to the government only if it's acted on instantly, I have no alternative but to ignore the usual channel, which is Caswell. Send it directly to the Foreign Secretary. <laughs> Caswell won't even be able to cut the guts out of it and dish it up as his own, which is his usual tactic when he's one lap behind. Unusual for you to tell me so much about your work. Are you sure you're not really telling me that you didn't sleep with Fredolina last night? Well, you know I never explain about such things. There just wasn't time, was there? However vast the inclination. That's the external line. Do you want to be bothered with outside calls when you've got so much to do? No. Well then, listen to me being you, unbotherable. Yes. Is that you, darling? No, darling, it isn't. That was Fredolina, asking if Darling is in. You will tell that girl not to ring you here again. The Foreign Office? Yes, that would be more apposite. That's the place to keep your foreign affairs going. Next thing should be giving me messages. Hardline Communist Party objection to participation by private British enterprise can be overcome by Minister Councillor Keatridge. Yes? Yes, he is. Is that you, Lincoln? His name's Dowling. Is that you, Dowling? Is that you, darling? Uh, yes, darling here. You didn't hear what I said, darling. I said, is that you, darling? Did you? Oh, I trust I'm not understanding you, Sir John. We've had enough trouble of that sort in the Foreign Office, you know. Well, be tranquil, darling. I don't know what sort of a boy you are. Miss Varnick just rang you, and because of her accent, she was misunderstood. It was thought she said, is that you, darling, and got herself disconnected. I now realize she said, is that you, darling? You better ring her back. She probably wants to speak for Kiedrich. Uh, unless, of course, you're having an affair with her yourself. A fascinating thought. Think of the clank when we draw the iron curtain of a night. Well, anyway, come down here shortly and I'll, I'll have another tape for you. The only undesirable people in this country that I worry about are neither deportable or alien. They're natives. 
Uh, that'll do, darling. <clears throat> I think I have Wilder now. And might I ask where, Minister? Oh, on a fast plane somewhere where he'll remain unheard of for a while. Unless he resigns. He'll never throw in the sponge, not against you. Oh, I hope not. I have a vested interest in his success, not his disgrace. I think his wife has him, too. Whatever Lady Wilder thinks is no concern of ours. Now, what does matter is Wilder's country house in Naranda. And that's more than enough. What Lady Wilder thinks is difficult to ignore. Listen for yourself. That was Freddily. Asking if Darling is in. You will tell that girl not to ring you here again. The Foreign Office? Yes, that would be more active. That's the place to keep your foreign affairs going. Well, were you able to hear that? How did you come by that? Oh, I didn't bug them, Lord Blythe. I know you were there all night. Well, I picked up some of Sir John's tapes by arrangement. This must have been left running during a private conversation. I removed it quite innocently and put on a new one. No doubt uh, as innocently as Sir John would like Lady Wilder to think of his association with Miss Vanick. Uh, you know her, don't you? Well, Fredolina, yes. Let me have that tape for later in the morning. Well, you'll be at the Yugoslav Embassy the rest of the morning. Sir John told me you'll go straight there and stay all day. Sir John really shouldn't use my private secretary to read him my appointment book. The question really is, who is working for whom? Well, Wilder began to use my young Mr. Hindlesham against me, long before I used you against him. If John's asking you to type that part of the report, he's taking you into his confidence. You know that. You sound surprised. Oh. I thought I'd avoided sounding surprised. Uh, then you sounded as if you avoided sounding surprised. Why so? I'm his private secretary. Uh, can you be as specific as to your staff position? Yes. I'm his friend. Well, then he'll have told you, as he told me, that today we're all going to help him bowl a leg break at our minister. If he hadn't told me, you'd have been indiscreet just then. I thought you foreign office professionals were never that. Not that I've ever found them much else. You're mooching and brooding about this office like a favourite bloodhound, wondering if he's going to be surprised by the new cat. Oh, you should think of yourself as a cat. Are you the sort that scratches when it's stroked? I might as well ask if you, a rover, are the sort that bites when it's patted. Oh, don't worry. Between us, you and your doggy amateur way, me and my catty professional, we can make sure nothing goes wrong for our master today. If anything does, that can be right for him just the same. Mm, that's an obscurity didn't explain to me. No pussy. So stay in your basket. Marginal note for Lord Bly. But leave it on all duplicates of the report for distribution, darling. Every single one. Begins. It was to see Kiedrich that I returned to London as soon as I had landed in Belgrade. I was acting upon information of which you must have been ignorant. Otherwise, you would not have sent me to Belgrade. Straight to the Yugoslav Embassy here in London. Let's have that again, Sir John. The utter blinding impudence. Oh, uh, if you've been looking for me, John, I've been down at the... John? Draft my resignation. <laughs> Don't keep looking at your watch. You'll know when it's five to twelve, he'll capitulate. Good morning, Hindersham. You said good morning two hours ago, Minister. You didn't know how good a morning. Mm -hmm. uh, will you uh, have a drink? What will you have, darling? The hemlocks. Champagne for victory. Unless, uh, Peter, you'd uh, prefer something else. Well, depends what we're celebrating, Lord Bly. Conquest. <laughs> Your master's in some trouble today. His wife's suing him for divorce. Oh, I got it from her solicitor, Charlie Granger. Used to be in the Treasury. It's an old civil servant he thought we might like to know before the press splashes it. Fredolina. Hmm? No, no. no. It's quite somebody else. That guy photograph out of her files. Home office files. Well, one woman or another, he's finished. Finished? Take a memo to Jason Fowler, will you? You're saying what? Quote. 
Government, even in its best state, is but a necessary evil. In its worst state, an intolerable one, unquote. Tom Paine. You are well read. Uh, what's Fowler done now? Why he'd imagine that I should want to spend three weeks with a man I wouldn't even take a cup of coffee with in a Brighton snack bar, I can't imagine. Oh, there's a shorter Tom Paine quotation, if you prefer to use it. What's that? These are the times that try men's souls. Uh, uh, just bring him and tell him I'll make my own arrangements. There's another interpreter here to see you, Sir John. We well, never know. Maybe Mr. Wright. All right, I'll... I'll see him. Um, show him in, Mrs. Waters, will you? Uh, do you know what you're looking for, John? I won't know till I see it. Oh, maybe you've just seen it. Sir John Wilder. Oh, uh, this is Sir John Wilder. I'm the man who thought the next breakthrough would be in colour radio. <laughs> <laughs> That. You may well ask, Mr. Henderson. I gather Sir Jason sent her over as a last resort. Well, as a last resort, I wouldn't mind resorting to. Well, my father's Lord Wessex. Ah, I thought sex would be in it somewhere. Well, um, uh, uh, shall we sit down? Okay. Um. Are you nervous? Of course I'm not nervous. Kate, that's not my head off. Everyone gets nervous at interviews. Well, I assure you that I'm not in the least. Fine. A bit pompous, isn't it? I assure you I'm not in the least. You sound like my father. How old are you? Twenty. How old are you? Has that any bearing on it? Well, has mine. Jason told me you wanted an interpreter. I can speak four languages, so it wouldn't really matter if I was 85, would it? You said quite definitely that if you went at all, we'd both go. Well, it just turns out that it isn't possible. It'll be all business. I shan't have any spare time at all. I bought all these things. Well, you can wear them when we go down to visit Tony and Sue. Apri Ski in Weymouth. I'm sorry, but there you are. You know what you are, don't you, John? You're a... But I've made arrangements to go with you. Well, it turns out that I shan't be needing you. Why do I have to explain everything twice to everybody? Jason told me I could assume I would be. That might teach you not to arrange your life around the assumptions of Jason Fowler. It's likely that I might have to handle this in a quite unorthodox way. And I don't want the full might and pomposity of the Foreign Office breathing down my neck. I shall take Don with me. I see. Well, there's no need to be so uptight about it. Up what? Upset. I'm not in the least upset. I shall simply have to rearrange things, that's all. Yes, well, you don't appear to be figuring very prominently amongst this week's most popular people. Did you know that I had an affair a couple of years ago? No. I just wondered if it might be in one of those dossiers government departments are so fond of drawing up nowadays. Tell me about it. Well, did it because of John, really? I think I said to myself, if he can do so and so, I can do such and such and the hell with it. Oh, it wasn't much of an affair, really, looking back on it. I mean, there was never really any chance of my going away with him. I wasn't prepared to give up what I'd got. So it was rather sneaky, really. Don't you think? I don't believe you. All right. I think you probably did love him. He was just an implement. What does that mean? I'm just telling you what happened. I don't care what you're not prepared to give up. Lincoln, you're a bloody fool. All right. Let's just take it I might be. I'm sure I'm not the only one about. <laughs> 